Hello, everyone, and welcome to our March 2015 Virtual Publisher Tips and Tricks training webinar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we are going to talk about several new features. These are all things that were brand new and included in our most recent update, uh, which was just about a week ago. Uh, there's some really interesting features that we hope you'll find useful. Uh, some of them aren't quite as obvious, and so uh, we thought it would be helpful to point these out. Uh, there's actually a number of uh, new features that we can't fit them all into one webinar, so uh, we'll probably uh, spread those across at least a couple more uh, webinars. Uh, we're going to talk about splitting spreads after uh, advertiser approval. This is a new option, and uh, we'll We'll kind of jump between virtual publisher and send my ad to show you that. Uh, we'll talk about inserts with custom sized pages. We also now have uh, two things that can be done at an editorial level as a group, and that's uh, to archive an editorial and to approve an entire editorial. So we'll take you through how to configure some of those and how those work. A little housekeeping here. We have uh, in the go to webinar control panel, there's a zoom button uh, to let you expand the image. Uh, I'm on a fairly large monitor, so you may need to do that to see all of my screen. Uh, questions, you can type those into the go to webinar uh, client or software, and uh, I'll answer those um, probably at the end. But uh, if, um, if it's appropriate, we'll stop and, and address things when, when you bring them up. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. OK, so I'm logged in. Let me make this full screen. OK, I'm logged in right now as a publisher in uh, Virtual Publisher, and um, I've got a plan that I've set up for testing here. And um, what I wanted to show first is how you can now set uh, a, a new kind of uh, split behavior for spreads. And this kind of lets the advertiser uh, do the work without them really uh, knowing about it. So um, what you do is you go to your publications, and you select your spread size, so add sizes. And then I have one here that I've created already. It's called uh, Spread Advertiser Auto Split. Actually, you'll give it a, a nicer name. But uh, I have here the Configure Spreads button when it's a, a two-page uh, coverage ad. And this menu is new, uh, File Treatment Split Spread After Advertiser advertiser approval. It used to just be a little checkbox and it said, you know, split spread after upload. Um, but we, uh, we now have this additional behavior, uh, split spread after advertiser approval. Uh, by the way, if you previously had uh, that checkbox set for split spread after upload, that setting has just been carried over. So it won't affect any, um, any of your existing spread sizes. Okay, so um, split spread after advertiser approval. No problem. Okay, so let's come back to our, our book plan. And just to point out on this page, I have uh, an ad uh, that my advertiser has already uploaded. Okay, so let me switch to another tab here in my browser and I'm logged in as that advertiser. You can see that if, uh, familiar, if you're, you're probably familiar with Send My Ad, and this is the advertiser uh, dashboard. So we know that we're in, in here as an advertiser. And I've got my, uh, my nice ad that I've uploaded. OK, so I look at it. I see my I'm OK with all my pre-flight warnings. It's the right size and all that. So let's approve the ad. OK, from the advertiser's perspective, everything is fine. It tells me the ad has been received by the publisher. That's all kind of normal. That's what I'm used to. But let's switch back 
to my virtual publisher plan. And when I refresh the plan, you'll see that those pages are processing and that uh, it's splitting the page for me. And you can see that if I drag one of those, those are actually now separate pages. And if I switch here, I've got my traditional split left and right. So I'll prove my split. And it all works um, as you'd expect. Okay, I've got my, my normal publisher approval cycles all set up and ready to go. And again, it stays on the plan where it should. So behind the scenes, it's doing all the normal uh, stuff that we do with splitting spreads. We, we keep the, uh, the original spread size ad for you so that you can access it if you need to. You can always roll back to it if, if required. Um, but it just sort of happens without, without you having to go in and split it yourself, without you having to um, uh, set it up to split on upload. Uh, so from an advertiser point of view, it's a nice seamless uh, workflow. And on your plan, you get the, uh, the split spread uh, easily. Okay, so we hope that that's a feature that uh, is useful for you. Uh, we kind of expect that to, to become a, a popular option. Let's talk about uh, the uh, custom sized uh, inserts. So, or custom page size inserts, I should say. So, this is configured from our normal uh, inserts interface. Let's go to the inserts tab and our plan details. And we can go, uh, sorry, we can go directly to the add button here and give it a name. And the nice thing is we don't have to have a, any sort of template for this because it is custom size uh, pages. We can just give it a, uh, a code, tell it where we want to position it. I'll throw it towards the end of the book. And uh, let's make it a four page count. Hit save. And once it's been created, it now gives you an interface for every page of the insert. And you can see that it's got the width and the height for each one of those. So I'm not sure what would make the most sense here, but let's, uh, let's just make two of these a smaller size page. Configure as you would normally. Your changes are saved automatically. And there is my insert right there. If I click that, you'll now see that I've got a good representation of the two larger pages and the two smaller pages. And this now will work just like any other insert. Um, the key thing is just being able to uh, mix and match uh, page sizes there uh, as appropriate. Uh, this came about as a uh, you know, specific request um, from customers. So uh, it's something that was added uh, specifically uh, based on user feedback. So we do listen and we try and, uh, you know, that's not something that everybody will need, but uh, hopefully it makes uh, your workflow easier if you, you do have that particular need. Okay, uh, let's talk about um, a new feature with approving an entire editorial. Now, to do that, what we want to do is switch to a uh, approval setup. And uh, as you may remember, there's two places to do that. There's the company profile where we have approval cycle set up, and you configure the approval cycles here. These are the publisher or a global level. We will call it either one. Um, that will apply to all, um, all publications that you have in your portal, uh, unless you override them with a more specific uh, publication level approval. And that's typically what we see people doing. So uh, let's go to my publication. And if I go to manage approval cycles, 
it's split by the types of uh, the types of approvals, the types of files. Um, I have a couple other options in Send My Ad, so those appear up here. You may not see those, depending on what your options are. Um, but let's take a look at editorial creation. This has been around for a while, but it's a relatively new feature. Uh, this is meant for when you're reserving the editorials, you're maybe going through and kind of hashing out content, uh, uploading JPEG previews. Um, this is a way for you to, to approve those, uh, those previews. Okay, so uh, it's a normal approval cycle. You just add it. Okay, uh, I've already done that. And the key thing here is this new option, allow complete editorial approval. So click that on. And uh, when you do that, we'll now get some extra options. And let's, uh, let's stage this up and show you how it works. Okay, uh, I have a two page uh, editorial right here. And what I'm going to do is just drag and drop over uh, a couple of pages. These are uh, just JPEG preview files, and I'll just drag them right here. And you can do this in various ways. You can do it in the editorials, um, in the editorials interface. You can do it in other screens, but uh, I'm looking at the plan, so it's easy to just grab those files and, and drag them over. Okay, now when I look at my story, you can see that I have this editorial creation approval. Before this feature, I'd have to approve this page here, and then I would come over to the next page. You can cycle up here, we'll do that in a moment. Um, but I'd have to approve each one of these separately. Okay. Um, that's uh, with two pages, that's no problem. If you've got a 20 page one, uh, then it's a little more cumbersome. And especially if uh, you know everybody's okay with the changes that have been made and um, you just need to quickly sign off on things. So what we can do now is just simply go to one of the pages and you'll see that there's this little gear icon up here. And there's the one option, approve editorial. It gives you a confirmation. Do you really want to do that? Yes, I do. OK, and you can see that the JPEG preview has been approved. And the next stage in our workflow is, OK, now we're ready to receive uh, materials for print for this. Let me switch to my next page. And again, you can see that the approval has been done and I'm waiting for, for those. Now, the important thing to remember is that you do have to go into where I showed you before in the approval cycles, and you have to turn this on for every approval that you want to make eligible for that you know, whole editorial approval. Okay. If you don't have that on, you're not going to see that that gear menu with that with that option. Okay, so um, that's the trick. And it's the other trick is that you know it's not you kind of have to know that that's there. It's something that you really you know you'll have to decide to use this. You'll have to set it up, and then you'll have to educate your staff on the fact that that is an option. Uh, you want to make their life easier of course. Um, so just let them know that that's going to be over in the panel, where to get to it. And, uh, uh, you know, you want to make sure that they really do want to approve all the pages that can lead to problems, of course, too, if people are not being careful about what they approve. Uh, but used correctly, it uh, hopefully is a big time saver for your employees. Okay, now um, let's cover our last um, our last topic, and this is about uh, archiving editorials. So it may happen that uh, you've got uh, a lot of editorials and uh, with or without materials, 
and you may decide that your interface is too cluttered, maybe a story is kind of in flux, you don't want to focus on it, maybe it's being pulled from this issue and moved to another one, uh, and you just need to kind of get it out of the way. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can do this. Uh, the feature's the same, but since we're in the plan, let me show you from here. I have a story, we'll, we'll grab this one, uh, coverage seven pages. And it's a new option under the Actions menu, Archive Editorial. And when I uh, refresh my plan there, you'll see the, the editorial has disappeared out of the clipboard. Well, that's great. How do we get it back when inevitably we decide that we need it back? Uh, the key here, the trick, is to go to the Editorials view. So you switch there, and there's a new filter in our menu called Archived. Now, normally, you've probably got all editorials on here. Okay, so if you scroll down, you'll see that that editorial does not appear here. But switching to the Archive view lets you see one or more, however many um, stories that you have uh, archived here. The other thing to point out is uh, switching back to the, that all editorials view, you can archive right from here as well. And what makes this uh, more efficient is that you can select more than one. Okay, back at the plan, you've got to actually be viewing the, the story in order to make that happen. But here it's a, a list view with a bulk action to archive the editorials. So let's do that. Okay, I've made my list a little shorter, which is what I was after. Let's switch to my archive view, and there's everything. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's put back those two. So let's just select those, and we'll unarchive the editorials. They disappear out of my archive view. If I switch to all editorials, there they are. Okay. Uh, now the question is, what what happens in the plan? Well, let's switch to the plan, and you can see they went back to the clipboard. Okay. Now, I normally don't advertise uh, uh, problems or bugs, uh, but there is one that, that we discovered and has been fixed already, uh, but we haven't, I don't think we've put it in production yet. Uh, and so just to let you know that if you decide to archive an editorial that's on the plan, uh, it will work up to the point where you restore it. And you, you might think one of two things. It might go to the clipboard when you restore it, or uh, it might go back into the position it was on the plan. Well, the intended behavior is that it actually goes to the clipboard. Because in the meantime, we don't know what you've done. You, you, know, you might have put um, an editorial or an ad on one or more of those uh, slots where, where your original editorial was. So the safe thing for us to do when we restore it is to put it back on the clipboard. Uh, well, that part we've discovered hasn't been working. It, it will still appear in your editorials list, um, but it won't be on the clipboard. So as I said, it's a, it's a bug. We fixed it. Uh, it will be out on production probably shortly um, when we do our next uh, smaller update. Uh, but just to be aware, that's, that's how it's work. Uh, that's how it works now. Um, if you decide to begin using this feature, uh, the way to avoid that problem is just to you manually uh, at the plan level, just drag your editorial uh, to the clipboard, just like that, and that'll take it off the plan, and then you can archive it. So just something to keep in mind. It's one of those things, like I said, we don't normally uh, advertise our bugs, but that's one that just... Uh, happened to come up uh, pretty recently and just after our, uh, our update. So uh, that, uh, that actually is our, uh, all of our topics. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them now. Uh, and also as a reminder, um, we love to have feedback from you about these webinars and topics that you'd like to cover in the future. So if you, uh, have any topics that you'd like to see um, addressed in next month's webinar, please let us know. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we, 
we had this update recently that was quite large and uh, there's quite a number of new features. So we'll, we'll kind of pick our way through those um, over the next um, month or two. Uh, and of course, there's always new things coming out and questions that come up in support. So uh, just please let us know. All right, well, thank you very much for your time and attention today. We hope you found this useful and um, please join us again next month. Thank you.